from Television City in Hollywood, we bring you the Jack Benny program. Thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lucky Strike program. As you probably know, this is my first television show of the season, and I'm quite excited about it because last year, I only did 10 shows the whole year, and this year, I'm going to do 13. 13 shows, that's three more than I did last year, or 486 less than Arthur Godfrey. <laughs> <laughs> but this season, I promise you, I'm going to bring some of the most important guest stars that you've ever seen on my, on my television shows. As a matter of fact, I've already made arrangements uh, to import some of these celebrities over from Europe, from Italy. I'm bringing a lot of these celebrities. I'm bringing over uh, Gene Kelly, <laughs> Gregory Peck, <laughs> Robert Taylor and Claudette Colbert, Anna Marie Alberghetti. Oh, no, no, that one I got here in Hollywood. <laughs> the others I'm bringing over, you know. And I'm also going to have this year a very, very important Broadway celebrity, uh, Mr. Wayne Sanger. <laughs> now, um, I know that his... <laughs> I know that his name at the moment is not, you're not familiar with his name, but that as soon as you see him, you'll recognize him. Because for four consecutive weeks, he sat in the audience next to the celebrity who was introduced by Ed Sullivan. <laughs> his agent is an usher. <laughs> well, Anyway, here I am for the first show, and I'm, um, one of the reasons I'm so happy is because I had, for the first time, a wonderful vacation, the most wonderful, I went to Honolulu, you know, for three weeks, and ladies and gentlemen, if you've never been to Hawaii, you must go. You know, I always thought the, those narrators, you know, that narrate the travelogues, I always thought that they exaggerate, but really don't, they don't, it's such a beautiful place. As a matter of fact, the Hawaiian Islands are really the... The, the tropical islands of enchantment. Yes, the tropical islands of enchantment, the paradise of the Pacific, Hawaii. The city of Honolulu, rising among regal palms on the curve of Waikiki Beach. The splendor of the Royal Hawaiian Hotel, and in the background, Diamond Head, wearing a majestic crown of fleecy clouds held in place by the gentle pressure of the trade wind. But out of this dream, our visitors are abruptly brought back to reality by the realization that their vacation has come to an end. But even the farewell is something to remember. Hawaii's heartwarming aloha. As the luxurious queen of the Pacific, the Lurleen, prepares to sail, there is music, flowers, and tumultuous gaiety. And here on the dock is where one of the most colorful ceremonies of the island takes place, the presentation of the lay. This is an old custom by which the natives express their feelings toward the departing visitors. First is the orchid lay, presented to those who have made friends while on the island. Next come the plumeria blossom. This token, when presented to a traveler, expresses the sincere wish that soon he will return again. Yes. Nobody leaves the island without the adornment of at least one flowery memento. For even the lay made of the common, ordinary ginger blossom is presented by the native shopkeepers to all those who have come into their stores and spent a little money. Uh-oh, is one of our departing visitors being neglected? Can it be possible that of all those people with whom he frolicked away those carefree hours at Waikiki, not one of them remembered to present him with the island's most treasured... Ah, here comes someone to correct this oversight. <laughs> oh, there's 
the whistle and Rochester isn't here yet. I wonder what's keeping you. Here he is. Rochester! It's about time you got here. Come on, we got to get going. Look, look, boss, do we have to leave now? Of course we have to leave now. Why are you dressed like that? I didn't have time to change. I was a special guest at a luau. A luau? Uh, that's the Hawaiian Smorges board. <laughs> I know what it is. And anyway, why, why were you a special guest? Well, this luau was given by the Polynesian chapter of the Central Avenue Social and, and Ukulele Club. <laughs> I know, but you still could have left early enough to bring your own luggage. I couldn't help it. They wouldn't let me leave until we drank a toast to King Kamehameha the first. King Kamehameha the first. Huh? Then we drank a toast to King Kamehameha the second. Uh-huh. Then I proposed a toast to King Kamehameha the third. The third, huh? Which led to a toast to King Kamehameha the fourth. Look, Rochester. Then they insisted that I drink a toast to King Kamehameha the fifth. Well, you were certainly popular. Popular? Boss, shake hands with King Kamehameha the sixth. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sakes. Look, Rochester. Oh, there we are. Come on, let's get the baggage and we'll go. Take your Betty, own house. It's Mr. Betty. Yes. I'm the manager of the Haleakala Delicatessen in Honolulu. Uh. And in honor of you having taken all your meals with us during your stay here in the islands, we'd like to present you with this. Oh, well, that's well, of course. I, I noticed that the other passengers received lays of, uh, of ginger and orchids. What is this one made of? A chicken liver. <laughs> chicken liver? You better not wear it on board, boss. The seagulls will drive us crazy. <laughs> Never mind. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> <laughs> what a show off. <laughs> bow majestically pointing into the trade winds, the luxurious queen of the Pacific, the Loreline, reluctantly sails from Honolulu Harbor. And as the Aloha Tower sinks behind the horizon, we bid fond farewell to Hawaii. However, our vacation has not come to an end, for we still have the luxurious voyage homeward. Nice voyage, isn't it? Huh? I said it's a nice voyage. Oh, yes, yes, it, it certainly is. <clears throat> <laughs> our, uh, our position is latitude 145, longitude 21. Well, that's nice. <laughs> The wind, you know, the wind is coming from the south, southeast at eight knots an hour, you know. Are you the navigator? <laughs> no, no, but I have a Commander Corey Space Patrol company. <laughs> I ate cereal until it came out of my ears. <laughs> That's how you get one of those compasses. You know. And uh, how long did you live in Kansas City? Oh, about 16 years. Sixteen years, hmm? And, uh, you graduated from high school? In 1936. 1936. There's, uh, 
Someone being interviewed there must be a celebrity of some kind. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a celebrity, too. Well, I guess I'll go to my stateroom. <laughs> Thank heaven, now I can read. <laughs> Why doesn't he take those things off? Cablegram for King Kamehameha the Sixth. Cablegram for King Kamehameha the Sixth. Oh, here, boy, here. Uh, are you? No, but I know His Majesty personally. <laughs> Yes, there's nothing like a trip on an ocean liner, for a voyage at sea is synonymous with romance. On shipboard, many a casual acquaintance has blossomed into true love. Hello? Hello. Would you like to play some shuffleboard? No, no, thank you. Deck tennis? No, no, thanks. I'm reading now. Okay. There's a celebrity being interviewed over there. I just want to go over and see who it is, you know, because, you know, after all, I'm a <laughs> sort of a celebrity, too. Yes? Oh, I, I, I beg your pardon. It's quite all right. Please stop in. For heaven's sakes, Mr. Kitzel, well, this is, what are you doing on this ship? I just had a wonderful vacation in Hawaii. No, did you visit all the islands? I went from Maui to Kaui, from Hilo to Haiti. <laughs> to Haiti? From Tuhete to Tahiti. No. Yes. Well, you must have seen all those hula dancers then with the grass skirts, huh? Yes, I did. And you know the most beautiful girls I ever saw was on the island of Oahu. Hoo, 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 hoo. <laughs> I know, I know what you mean. You know? Well, let me, do you, is this your first trip to the islands? Oh, goodness, no. Every year this time, I'm spending two glorious weeks on the tropical islands of enchantment. No. Yeah. Well, how, how can you afford it? I got a nephew who's a master of ceremonies on a quiz program. <laughs> And you always win? This year I went direct to Hawaii and he cabled me the questions. <laughs> no. Yes. Well, that's wonderful scene. Is your wife with you? Who do you think I'm hiding from? Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello. <laughs> After 1944, would I be saying... Ahem. Ahem. How do you do? Oh. Uh, how do you do? Hello. <laughs> Certainly is a nice trip, isn't it? Yes, it's, it's lovely. Weather and everything has been so nice. <laughs> yep. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Jack Benny. Well, I'm Mrs. Michelson. Oh. I'm Dr. Kinsey. <laughs> sea is an event that will always be remembered because there are so many things to enjoy. Dancing in the salon, sunbathing on the top deck, swimming in the ship's pool, and in the evening there is always a movie in the ship's lounge. Uh. Gosh, that was a great picture they showed last night. Gentlemen prefer blondes. 
Boy, they sure had two beautiful girls in that movie. Jane Russell and Marilyn Monroe. I know them both so well. Why couldn't one of them been on this trip? Here I am, alone, in a romantic mood. Gee, Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe. Don't leave Marilyn. What? Marilyn, don't go. Marilyn. Marilyn, please don't go. <laughs> Marilyn, wait. <laughs> Marilyn, why did you walk away from me? Why, why did you want to leave me? Because I can't trust myself with you. <laughs> what? You're so strong and I'm so weak. And when you look at me with those big blue eyes, I just, I just... I understand. <laughs> In the picture, all I wanted was money and diamonds. But now, for the first time, I realize that all I really want is you. Meryl. <laughs> dream on, Mr. Benny, dream on. Marilyn. Marilyn, I'm mad about you. I'm mad about you, too, Jack. Jack. Yeah. Jack. Will you do something wonderful for me? It would make me very happy. Well, of course, Marilyn. I'd do anything, anything for you. Well, what is it? Well, in my next picture, there's going to be so many love scenes. I want you for my leading man. Oh, Marilyn, I'd, I'd love to be your leading man. Good. Now, if we can only get permission from Daryl Zanuck. Why? Who did Mr. Zanuck have in mind? Himself. <laughs> Gee, Marilyn, I, I just can't get over just the both of us here all alone on the Laurelly. Yes, Jack, I never dreamed it could happen to I. Neither did me. <laughs> Marilyn, why, why are you sighing? I was just thinking, Jack, how generous you are. Just so we could be alone on this trip, you chartered the Laureline for $600,000. I did? <laughs> if that doesn't wake him up, nothing will. <laughs> Marilyn, Marilyn, I know this is sudden, but will you... Will you marry me? Marry you? But look at the difference, difference in our ages. Well, there isn't much difference, Marilyn. You're 25 and I'm 39. <laughs> yes, but what about 25 years from now, when I'm 50 and you're 39? <laughs> Gee, I never thought of that. I did. You shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Marilyn. Marilyn, will you... will you have dinner with me tonight? I'd love to, Jack. Thanks ever so. At eight o'clock? All right, but I'd better be going now. Bye-bye, baby. That's 
strange. What's strange? I'm so crazy about you, but that kiss didn't affect me at all. That's funny. I'm a wreck. <laughs> Uh, don't forget. Marilyn, don't forget dinner tonight. I won't. At 8 o'clock. I'll remember. <laughs> Marilyn, come back here a minute. Please come back. Marilyn, give me one more kiss before you go. You're not Marilyn Monroe. Well, you ain't no Weryl Flynn. <laughs> Gee. And I was so sure I was talking to Marilyn Monroe. Ah, yes, the sea plays many mental tricks as you're gently lulled in the cradle of tranquility. But there's nothing as soothing and restful as a Pacific cruise back from the tropical islands of enchantment. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Marilyn, um, this is your first First appearance in television, isn't it? Yes, it is, Jack. Well, I'm quite flattered that you made your first appearance on my show. Thank I really you. am. Just wonderful to have you. Uh, is, uh, have you a picture that's coming out pretty soon, a new picture? I mean, we've seen Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. Another one, new one? Yes, it's called How to Marry a Millionaire. It's also in CinemaScope. Oh, it is. In CinemaScope, too. Yes. You know, I, um, I made a picture once. Um... <laughs> <laughs> The uh, horn blows at midnight, <laughs> and I believe if that had been made in CinemaScope, it would have been a huge success. Well, you know, CinemaScope is very complicated. Mm -hmm. In order to put the big screen in all the theaters, they have to take out a lot of seats. Mm -hmm. Well, in my picture, they could have taken out all of the seats. <laughs> Jack, what? I don't know why you're always panning the horn blows at midnight. I saw it. You did? Yes. And you don't know why I'm panning it? Did you like it? No. <laughs> well, thanks ever so. So long. Goodbye, Marilyn. You. you know, ladies and gentlemen, I'm really quite, quite flattered. I feel highly honored that I was able to have Miss Monroe for my first show, and I do want to thank 20th Century Fox so much. Of course, another thing that thrilled me today is because I also opened my radio series today. You know, I did my first radio show, and I had my same cast with me. Uh, there's Dennis and Mary and uh, Don Wilson and Rochester, everybody but Phil Harris. Funny thing, Phil Harris hasn't been with me for two years, and I still don't dare light a match in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> but I love radio. And am I through? Is that all I get? Oh, well, thank you very, very much.